Uh, today is uh, December 5th, and this is a meeting of the Wolfville Budget Committee. And tonight we're going to be talking about the budget for the Conservation Commission, the Fire Department Revisit, Planning and Zoning, and also the uh, Living Museum. Steve Johnson, can I get you to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jim, do you have anything for us before we get started? I do not, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we'll start with the Conservation Commission. That is in the Planning and Zoning section, page 21. Lenoir. Oh, hi, I'm Lenore Clark. I'm the chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, 100 salaries. Two hundred. Three hundred. Four hundred. Uh, yes, Any question about the, um, the invasive species management? We're doing that again. Is that the plan? Yes, yeah. the the plan Spraying is the, the plan is place? the plan. Is, we are currently managing now three properties for invasive species. Mm -hmm. So Front Bay Park, Goodwin's Basin, and Towns Garden. Goodwin's Basin is a new property that we just added this year. Um, and we're doing we're doing a combination. There, there's three ways to treat invasive species, overarching ways. There's mechanical, there's chemical, and there's biological. And we are employing a, a combination treatment. So we are doing a combination of mechanical and chemical treatment at those sites. What would the biological be? Right now, the only species for which biological control is sanctioned in New Hampshire is the purple loose strife, and that's actually not one of the species that we are working on. It's not something we have. And that is a, um, I want to say it's the nymph of an insect, a caterpillar, that they've actually had really good success at with purple loose strife, which is pretty cool. <laughs> but um, as of right now, that's all that um, UNH Cooperative Extension says is sanctioned for the state. So what what are you treating? What invasive species are you treating for them? Um, we have oriental bittersweet, we have um, multiflora rose, we have Japanese barberry, we have um, glossy buckthorn, we have common buckthorn. Um, that's, those are the ones that come to mind, and I know there's more than that, but those are kind of the biggies. Matt, would any of your uh, barnyard animals uh, work on them? Yeah. Has anybody approached you for that? I don't think anyone from the town has approached. Mm -hmm. We've been approached by residents in the community. Right. We, we have goats. And right. I, I'm not looking for you know, a job here. Right, right, right. But um, goats were great on So this vegetation. was brought up a couple of years ago. You may, I, don't, I think you were the one that brought it up, actually, when we yeah, first. Yeah, I got laughed at. It no, um, I hope you didn't misinterpret that. That's um, I would love to be able to use goats. So at Matt's, Mr. Plache's suggestion, we looked into it. The problem with the goats <coughs> is that um, they work well in certain scenarios where you're trying to completely get rid of all vegetation because they eat everything but the roots. So if you're in a situation like ours where you're trying to actually reestablish a native community of plants, the goats will destroy everything and. In invasives, yes, but also the natives. And then what grows back first and fastest is the invasive, so you can actually make the problem worse. But they do work well in certain situations, like um, they've been successful, I think, using them in all places. New York City uses them on some of their highways. Um, because along the roadside, you're not trying to establish native vegetation, you're just trying to I've keep them one. clear. So there are scenarios where that makes sense, but um, <coughs> our research showed that this was not one of them. I have a question. Uh, do you uh, 
broad spray the leaves like a no. sweep, or do you do the cut and the dab? Uh, sometimes it's the cut and the daub, and sometimes he uses a backpack sprayer that has uh, a specialized piece of equipment called an ultra low volume wand. And it's this tiny little, it looks like a, I'm not sure if it's really brass, it looks like it's brass. It's basically this tiny nozzle so they can target the actual immediate area, and no, there's no broadcast spraying at all. Okay. I, I guess I, I would ask the question then. How many years is, will this continue? Why, why isn't it working? We did this two years ago and again last year. I, it, oh, and it is working. Going back it's, this year. It's working well, and I hope and some of you will take a walk out to you know Front Bay Park. We actually have trails going through. Town's Garden doesn't have trails, but it's the town garden. You can actually go stand at the garden and look. It is working, but it's any resource professional will tell you it's not a one and done scenario. It's it. This problem has been around. It's, a lot of these plants were introduced in the 1800s. My understanding is that bittersweet was introduced then because it made for very fast growing, um, not hedgerows, that's not the exact right word, but they were used to encircle, um, to corral sheep, basically to keep them in place, like a fence, because it grew thick and fast like a fence. Mm -hmm. So if you have a problem that's been around for 200 years, you're not gonna fix it in one year. Um, so the idea is that it will get fixed over time. And in fact, each year we're finding it's less it's a less intense requirement. So the reason we can, we're still asking for the same line item amount is that we've added this third property, Goodwin's Basin. Um, but that the idea is that each year it will cost us a little bit less. And eventually we're going to get it to the point where we can hopefully get in there and just do hand pulling and not have to rely on any chemical treatment at all. That's our ultimate goal. So it's kind of like, hey, Hay grows, you cut it, and more hay grows. Exactly. And you have to keep cutting. And it grows back worse than before, unfortunately. With yeah, some of them. This isn't being cut, it's being put down. Poison. Some of it's being, well, like I said, it's a combination. Combina and again, there's all, I think Japanese knotweed is another one I forgot to mention. So some of them are being cut and daubed, and some are being, and it's, it depends on the species. And that's one of the things we really like about the gentleman that we've hired. He's a master arborist, and he is. I don't know if you're familiar with Doug Saigan, who's the like the invasive species czar for the Department of Ag Markets and Food, um, but he highly recommended this gentleman because of his plant knowledge. So he's not just employing a one size fits all approach. He's looking at each site, he's assessing what's there, and he's <coughs> employing targeted approaches based on the species that are there. We had poison ivy hand pulled by a special company that specializes in poison ivy removal. It still came back. Yeah. You can't get every root, every piece, and everything, and, it, and it's so horrific. Poison ivy was used by um, Native Americans to create barriers around their encampments. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. It, it's similar to what we do with milfoil. We, we pull, we pull, we pull, and when it gets out of control, we can't pull anymore. We put some chemicals down, and then we go back to pulling. It always goes back. You really? can't get all of it. So it will never be done then. Correct. It may not. This will be a yearly thing? It might be, but hopefully it not at the same level. That's the that would be the goal, would be the I mean we're we're going to have to always manage it, yes. We might not the hope is that we won't have to ask for the same ten thousand dollar line item every year though. Do you have an do you have any sort of an idea as to where we're going to be in say three years four years? Oh, we'll be in a much better. I mean, at this point, yeah, we've just no, we only started. That, I need a, I need yeah. kind of a number ballpark. Where oh. do you think this ten thousand bucks is going to be when you get it under control and are on a maintenance basis? If we're on a maintenance basis, if I had to guess, uh, no, admitted, yeah. I'm just pulling a number out. I would guess yeah. maybe three thousand might okay. be reasonable. Right. Okay. So, well, it more than half. It's uh, Lenore. I noticed. Uh, <clears throat> As of the end of October, you spent almost 9,000, and we've had a, a, a great deal of decent weather since, so have you pretty much exhausted that uh, 10,000? We are waiting for another bill. It's on the way. I had to call our guy and keep asking. He's being lazy yeah, about yeah. his billing, but yeah, so we do have another well. bill on the way. Okay. Right, I have a question for the uh, town manager and the select <coughs> men, select women. Um, is the town, vis-a-vis -vis the highway department and or the parks and rec. Are they learning anything from conservation's application of uh, 
attempt to eradicate uh, knotweed and bittersweet and also um, burning bush. Because I when, I, what, when I go through uh, the Sewell Woods trails, the Abenaki trails and so on, so, as well as pretty much anywhere, um, the bittersweet is just everywhere. And can we learn something from this application and maybe at some point address, um, and like it's gonna be a process to get rid of it, but it, it's, when you go walk through the woods, um, Abenaki and trails and so on, that stuff is just everywhere. So just a question, just a. Sewell Woods is not our responsibility. We don't own it. It's Lakes Region Conservation. Well, then council. delete it from the list. <laughs> the um, other stuff. Abin That's all I'm saying. The other Abin stuff. Yeah. You know, the stuff that comes under the town purview. Okay. Uh, Abenaki, the trails there are um, being maintained by Nordic Skier for cross country ski and um, snowshoeing, and by the Single Track Alliance for biking. So they. Um, also, the Single Track Alliance has Dan Coons, who um, is a conservationist and on the Conservation Committee, and so, um, yes, they, it, there's crossover. Great, thanks. If I may add something to that, um, the consultant that we've been using is actually so good at what he does and so reasonable, he has since been uh, hired by DPW. He's the one who's been working on the Japanese knotweed along um, the town roads for the past two years. Awesome. Um, and Friends of Library has hired him, and yeah. certain individual members of both the Conservation Commission and the Land Bank of Tuftonboro Wolf Wolfboro have hired him. Awesome. So. Love to hear it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, 500 series, 600 series, 800 series. And that's it for the Conservation Commission. And I appreciate that you're getting funded exactly the same amount that you had last year. We try. Good job. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go on to the Fire Department revisit. The revisit is to add another full time employee, which previously we discussed last year it was supposed to be one employee last year, one employee this year, and one employee next year. And there's been someone from the budget committee that wants to change that to make it one employee last year and two employees this year and no employee next year. Should have been provided by some stuff from the chief. Hope everyone's had a chance to uh, review it. And if you've got any questions for the chief, please feel free to ask. Yes, Tom. Uh, has the Board of Selectmen uh, had this submitted to them? Or is uh, it just coming to us? My understanding the last time you hadn't seen it, so they haven't seen anything. And you haven't seen anything since the last meeting? No. No. Have you had a meeting since then? <laughs> have we? <laughs> I think we have. Probably. We had a living museum. I think we did yes. have one. But this wasn't on the agenda? No, because you had asked for figures, and I don't think the figures were together. Ah, okay. Thank you. Okay, anybody have any questions of the chief? I have one comment. Uh, yes, sir. Along the lines of what Tom is asking about, if the Board of Selectmen haven't had a chance to pass muster on these memoranda, should we be waiting until they do? <coughs> yeah. Just it, a question. It, it, it's your, you are the ones who brought this request forward. Um, when the chief and I discussed his budget originally. Um, he did have a plan in there for additional overtime. We discussed it. We had a conversation about a cost-benefit analysis of hiring two firefighters versus the one and the overtime. And as a result um, of that conversation, we stuck with the one firefighter a year for three years as to the plan that we executed last year. Um, so the Board of Selectmen have not seen that um, because it got removed. Um, as to the Board of Selectmen um, revisiting this, I mean, <laughs> it's, I think it's a chicken or an egg <laughs> thing here at this point. You know, it's, it's your request, that's, that's um, and we'll take it back if you guys no, 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 that's fine. <coughs> authorize. 
The way the budget is, Jim, is that overtime built in there so it's covered, the budget that we have? No. No. It was removed. You know, want me to comment on this one? Uh, Jim, Since yeah. I'm on the you have anything? Do you have any comments about? Are they going to be able to do the job with the budget they have at immediate overtime? So this is a, a challenging question for me. Um, you all know where my roots lie. <laughs> so, you know, I, I stand firm behind the plan that we executed, one firefighter a year for the next three years last year. Um, you know, there, there are a lot, there, there's a lot of increases in this budget this year. Um, and that's not taking into account the warrant articles that will be coming forward as well. Um, while I support the concept, um, and I obviously support the department, um, I think it's a lot to ask of the taxpayers when we came forward with a plan for one firefighter a year over the next three years. Um, but in the same breath, I understand this puts it to bed and it's done, it's over with, um, and it, it allow, would allow the chief to operate his department at a higher level of efficiency and operational safety. Bob, did you have something? Yes. So anyways, I met with the town manager. We had a pretty lengthy discussion about it. The thing that <clears throat> struck the conversation with me and the chief when we met, and this is this is me, it's got nothing to do with the chief, is the line, the overtime line was cut by $22,000. What I'm disappointed about is the selectmen should have saw it and asked the question why. We on the budget committee all do that. If we see a line go up or down, we ask the question because there's a reason why someone decided to do that. Now we know what that reason is. Had I not brought it forward, no one would know. It was actually a very good Thing that the chief did. He was trying to find a way to backfill it through overtime. $22,000. If this town can't afford $22,000, we're in trouble. That's awful. No, I'm not done. That is awful. Awful, awful that the selectman didn't catch that and at least say, we know what it is, we don't support it, or we do support it. It was a very responsible plan brought forward to try to bring that safety up. So we had at least three firefighters that we could have brought in. That's what he was trying to do. He wasn't trying to rob the bank. And that struck the conversation. That's why this is even being talked about right now. I, I, I do think that the town, the selectmen and the budget committee, is a reactive approach to the fire department instead of a proactive approach. We need to take a proactive approach. This department is understaffed and underfunded. And it's not funny, it's not amusing to me at all. You have a town that's growing, your infrastructure is growing, and you invite thousands of people in it. And yet since 2003, you've added one firefighter. One. You have 12 firefighters, including the chief and the deputy. You have eight call firefighters, two of which, to my understanding, will not be responding to fires. That leaves you six. You might get three. You're understaffed. I mean, that's the problem here. It's why I brought it forward. And the other thing that concerns me is the police next year, apparently, I didn't know this until Mr. Tuffer brought it up, are going to ask for a police officer next year, full time. And I can literally see, me and, me and the town manager had this conversation, we bumped the fire department back and had the police officer. That bothers me. Bothers me immensely. I don't. I, I don't know what's funny. I, no, I just find it funny that you would say that we would not follow through with the three that we had promised in order to put a police officer on. And if you had read what the fire or the police chief said in your packet, it says in there they want to add one starting in 2024 for the next three years. So it was well disclosed for you. The town manager went through this budget. He promised to bring it in. This is a huge budget. We wrestled with all sorts of things. And he went through and did cuts where he felt that they should be made. I look at him, he was the fire chief. 
I took it that he had done that conversation with the chief and that he understood that department probably better than any other department in the town. And if he felt that it could be run that way, with trying to bring this budget in reasonably to you, that was one I didn't particularly get to question. There were a lot of ones I did, but that was not one of them. And I think we try as hard as we can. You, the selectmen, we have a hard time balancing needs versus what we can, can ask the taxpayers for. And I have found this year one of the worst years I've had to deal with in terms of a budget with drivers like gas and oil and stuff that has driven the, the, the um, budget up and some of our needs. So, you know, I, 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 I think that we, that's what I did. I feel comfortable with it. I feel comfortable with my, our town manager's knowledge of the fire department, and I believe that what he did was correct. Thank and you, Linda. on top of that. Thank you, Linda. Hold on just a second, please. Casey, can you give me the current number of year-to-date for the overtime? No, I can't write the second. I can get that back to them. So we had a lengthy discussion. You think that we didn't even talk or think about it. You can go back and you can watch the meeting. We had a lengthy discussion. I asked a lot of questions of the, the fire chief and the assistant chief. I asked them, um, would having another firefighter be safer for them? I asked them um, why they needed another firefighter. And they explained to me because if they only had two on call and they went to a fire and they both had to go in, there would be nobody manning the truck. That's, so you have to go back and watch our meetings before you accuse us of things. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing that I did independently was I called every fire department in the Lakes Region area that had the same size um, population as Wolfboro to find out how many firefighters and call they have. We are right in line with all of them. We don't have five less, three less, two less than the other communities around us. So you have to do some back study before you, you start talking about what's good and what's not good. Do we need another firefighter? Yes, one firefighter would be, would be appropriate so that we have three on at every call they go to. So one's manning the truck and two are going in. But as Linda said, Jim knows the department. He ran the department. He was the, the fire chief. And we trusted his judgment on this. John, yes, go ahead. Go ahead, John. John, go ahead. My question is this. Is there been an increase of re re required responses from year to year to year? Ask him. I think it's in the sheet that we were given. It is in the sheet. Yeah. The packet that I gave you last week. Right? Yeah, last week. You have it in front of you, John? If not, I can give you mine. Okay. This is one here. No, right here, John. A lot of increase there, I see. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when we quote facts and figures, I like to be, have things accurate. The population in Wolfboro has not increased dramatically. I got, I've got the, the census going back to 20, uh, 60 years. Mm -hmm. And the increase in, from 2010 to 2020 is not that great. How about from 2019 to 2022? Beg your pardon? How about from 2019 to 2022? The official census is taken every 10 years, sir. Uh -huh. I understand. That's but the right. population in Wolfboro has gone up three or 400 people since 2019. What, what, what's the basis of the figure? Uh, uh, voter rolls. Voter rolls. Voter rolls. What? What Pat, what Pat Waterman is registering for voters, that's where she, we're getting the figure from. And their that, residents in order so to... So that's a 5% increase in the last three years. On the voter poll rolls, the census, though, doesn't show that. So, so when we quote figures, I like it to be accurate. 
Now, <clears throat> there's been a moderate increase in the requirements, the, in the responses you made. Now, you're going to want to have, what, one more this year, in 2023, one more in 2024, and one more in 2045, or no. 35, whatever. No. We, are, we already started with the one this year. <clears throat> the three would be 2022, 2023, 2024. That's ridiculous. Okay. Based upon the responses. Casey, before you give that number, this I, want to see, I want to see if I'm close. 67,962 40? 65,000. Okay. But I just want to put a footnote on that. That's 93% spent at this point. Um, and it would include one week in December, is the number I'm giving you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Matt. Chief, how many out of a month? 30, say there's 30 days in a month, one shift a day. How many of those shifts are covered by only two as opposed to three? <clears throat> With the additional person we added this year. If we and that's assume open, 30 assuming days. Assuming nobody calls in sick and, you know. Yep. Um, I, I mean, I think I know what you're asking. If we assume 30 days, I would say right now we probably run half of those half of uh, them three. would be covered by two or half right. well, three either way. either way roughly half and two is not enough really. two we're, we're, we're i mean but yeah the, we're, the intent of the the three-year plan was to get to a minimum of three yeah and so by adding one that would reduce it to that would reduce the number of days when there's if you add another next year that will then reduce that Further by some number, correct. So and maybe a third would then, a third of the 30 days, you know, for, assume each shift is 24 hours, I don't know, then a third of the month, you have two guys, say, uh, instead of three, you have two personnel instead of three covering it at, to respond to medical calls. Correct. When there's two, you're at a disadvantage, you're at risk for both the personnel and the citizens. There's, there's Correct. The, the idea being, should we move forward, once we get to 2024, we would be in a position to then maintain the minimum of three. Now remember, there's also, um, explain to them how the number of hours per, uh, the, per fight of firefighter is going to be cut. You're going from 48 hours a piece to 42 hours a piece, correct? But doesn't that just mean you're not doing the Kelly days? Correct. Okay. And the Kelly days are the reason you've only got two people. Okay. You haven't, you know, you have to have Kelly days. And mm -hmm. You have to have so many a month, and that means it's mandatory they have to be off. And then you only got two people. Correct. John? Yes, sir. I got a motion in the queue when you're ready for it. Go ahead. I make a motion to adjust the fire department budget for the chief to hire two new firefighters next July instead of one. I'll second that. Okay, discussion? On the motion? Yeah. Um, as I said the other night and Bob repeated tonight, police department wants to hire a new officer next July. If we, if we maintain the status quo, we will, instead of this year, two firefighters this year, we'll have one firefighter and one police officer next year. Um, I don't see uh, next year's budget being any much lighter than this year's, uh, assuming that we uh, pass a, uh, a warrant article for a new public safety building. That'll, uh, that'll result in a great deal of debt service in the following budget. So I, I, I see it as, uh, going to be a lot this year or it's going to be a lot next year. Both Chief Zadi and Chief Nichols uh, voiced their opinion the other night that they felt it was urgent that we hire two next next July. So that's my comment on the moment. Okay, I'll give my comments. I'm going to vote against the motion because last year 
we sold to the taxpayers one new person last year, one new person this year, and one new person next year. And that's a people, I don't care what you say, that's what we told the taxpayers. And I've looked at the overtime, and right now, I appreciate the Suckman's number, their overtime for this year is right on the button as far as what he should use next year for overtime. It's, it's a little bit generous, probably by a couple thousand dollars. If your motion passes, Bob, I'm going to be able to put a motion in to cut the overtime by probably $25,000, because they're not going to need that kind of money in the overtime. Mm -hmm. But again, I think, you know, we, we gave our word, we voted, we supported the budget, we supported this plan. Now suddenly the plans change. You can say that the police department wants another man next year. That doesn't mean they're going to get another man next year. There's a lot going on in the economy, and uh, people are struggling to pay the taxes, oil, and everything else. And if you think this is going to end magically in the next month, the next six months, this whole situation in our country, it's not going to. We're going to be in a hard press for the next couple of years to get through all this, probably till the next election. But that's just my my prediction. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would uh, concur with with John. I, I'm going to not vote against. I'm going to vote against the motion, um, and stay with what we voted on in the past. And um, just as a side, when the police department comes in and wants another one, I'm going to vote against that because I I think they're overstaffed now. <coughs> but that's another whole discussion for next year. But for this motion, I will vote against it. Right. Yeah, I, uh, I'm inclined to agree um, with the uh, process that we started last year with one, one firefighter a year. Uh, I'm, my fear is the precedence that it might set um, Particularly, if the police department sees uh, springing on two firefighters in one year, or you know, what's to prevent them from trying to justify, uh, you know, multiple officers in one year? Um, you know, as far as the uh, uh, critical aspects of the need, uh, right now, I mean, I'm not convinced by the the call numbers that that has you know, really makes it a, a critical need at this moment. Um, if there's a large event, I mean, certainly all know that uh, one additional firefighter is not going to, um, you know, make or break the situation because we, we've got mutual aid that we rely on just about every major call. It's the it's the uh, minor calls or the, the small events, uh, you know, for lack of better words, that, uh, you know, that third person on duty um, would be helpful. But for major critical uh, incidents, um, you know, we got, you know, the command staff that I'm, I'm sure is always on call, and uh, the mutual aid situation uh, from town to town that uh, can be there to assist. I'm just very uh, afraid of the precedence that it would set. Uh, we know how we all felt um, a couple of years ago when the police department at the deliberative session um, added or, or advocated for a position um, that uh, we had uh, cut from the budget or, or had indicated that we felt was not wise to include in their budget at that time and that they they brought it forward uh, at the deliberative session, got it funded, and uh, uh, eventually never filled the position. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm all in for, for uh, adding three firefighters at the uh, rate of one a year, because um, just for that reason that they had had an increase in staff since 2003. Um, uh, so that's my two cents. Thank you. Bob, did you have something? Yes. Um, I concur with, and unfortunately, as you are aware, well aware, I wasn't here at the November 15th meeting. However, having read all the accompanying documents and remembering the fact that we did, in fact, commit to a one-year uh, program to the voters, uh, I would have to, I would have to vote against the motion at this point. Anyone else? We get a roll call vote. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Bob Tuffer? Yes. 
John Burt? No. John McDonald? No. Uh, Tom Bell? No. Bob Mulholland? Yes. Um, Brian Black? No. Steve Johnson? No. Uh, Bob Lohman? No. Matt Posh? Yes. Okay. So it fails. Um, Seven to three. Six to three. Six to three. Uh, motion fails. <coughs> uh, no. Three. Wait three, minute. Six, <laughs> I'm saying it backwards. Six, three. Three. Eight, zero. And six, uh, six and zero. Okay. Sorry. John. <laughs> yes, sir. Motion. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. So, I want to go back to the overtime line. I want to make a motion to put 22701 back in it that was taken out, which will allow the chief to backfill and at least have something that way, which I think was the responsible thing and the responsible way for him to do it in the first place. I'll second it. Okay, discussion? Yes, sir. Didn't you just say they were spot on with the budget they had last year? Uh, yeah, the way I did, I took the, how much they spent up to October, and it was about $5,987.43 a month in overtime. And Casey, you came up with how much for the year so far? 65000 65000 up till? Uh, one week in December. One week in December. Probably got five more weeks left. And right now they're appropriated uh, 71305 for 2023. So Bob's motion would make that 91000 Which is what it, which, what, it's 94. what the department request was. 94. Okay. 94000 Okay. Which if they're on target, is but there going to be a, a, an increase uh, that they need for what, next year? Let me explain what they're doing with that. Or okay. do you want to do it, Chief? So what that money is for is to backfill. So what they'll do is they'll use firemen that they currently have, mm -hmm. and they'll pick up an extra shift. So it's overtime. You got to pay them overtime. So it was a way to backfill to get that third. While we're waiting to get that third. But so what are they doing now? So if they haven't spent it now, they why are they going to do it next they year? Don't, they don't have it. So you, they're short. So the, but the, the actual is coming is in. that. When this new person's hired, you'll have two shifts that have four that'll drop to three people on duty. Mm -hmm. There'll be that one shift that will only have three, and then on Kelly days, they drop to two. What's a but Kelly day? I'm, so, I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm pretty novice at this. It's, so. it's, a, it, it's a very fair question. Yeah. So over a 28-day period, you're allowed to work so many hours during that period and what it boils down to is their schedule is over a three-week period it averages out to be 48 hours a week now some weeks they may work 72 hours another week they may work 24 another week they may work 48 but during one point in that cycle they're supposed to normally come back into work they don't they're pulled out and it, it just averages out over the three-week period. So. But I, I guess my point is they've, they've got the staff they've got now, and, and they're dealing with an overtime number that is coming in, as John says, the close to uh, what is projected by the town budget and the, and the Board of Supervisors budget. So why would we need to increase it? The number you're looking at is only, for this year, only is to backfill the two. Does that make sense? So now you only have to back go one if you get a new, if you get a new. No, uh, to two on duty. In other words, if somebody's on a Kelly day and somebody else is on vacation, we have to bring somebody in to work that shift. Mm -hmm. If we, if you add that additional overtime, the intent of that would have been that after July 1, when we've hired the second of the three people, we could then, at least on paper, um, run a minimum of three on two groups, and we'd be at short on the third, we would have money in the overtime line to bring in a third person on that third group. Okay. Does that make but sense? Without that, but without that money, 
you can only back them to two. We, we'd run with two, two on one group for the, for the remainder of the year. Jim, can you just explain what this Kelly schedule is all about? It's like 24 hours on and then two days off. Can you explain that a little bit? So there's a wide a array of schedules. Some departments work a 56-hour work week. Some departments work a 48-hour work week. And some departments work a 42-hour work week. The 42-hour work week does not require the Kelly days. It's a, it's a fixed schedule from first of the year to the end of the year. Quick question. On a 42-hour week without a Kelly day, you've got to have more staff, though, is what you're saying. So the more, the, the further out, the further the hours, the more likely you're going to have. The more efficiency you have okay. the, right. the okay. number of employees. If we added the third firefighter in 24, at that point we would have enough to change to a 42-hour week if the board and, and everybody concurred and have a minimum of three people. Does, it, does that explain it? Yeah, got it. You would need what, what four that? groups of three to do that instead of what well, today we have three groups of three, two, three, three, two, and two with one floater at the moment. What impact would that have in the overtime? That's something we, we that's going to be part of the consideration if we choose to go that route because should we adopt the 42 hour week? All other things being equal, every time somebody asked for a leave day, we'd have to fill that shift. Okay. The other thing that I, from past practices in other departments, that you would observe in that is there would most likely be an impact negotiation, which would take place because you're effectively changing the weekly annual pay. And we don't want to go down that road right yeah. now. I understand. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <coughs> <clears throat> I, I guess I would like to ask the chief a question if I could. Sure. Chief, if you get this overtime, is this going to put too much stress on your full time staff coming back to fill all these additional shifts on top of what they're already filling for overtime shifts? That's what I asked at the select meeting. Yeah. It <clears throat> I anticipate to a degree it'll be a challenge. Um and I guess the best way I can explain it is um, when I started doing this and then when I eventually was hired full time, when you know, I was in a position, still am, um, we don't have any kids, uh, somebody dangles an overtime shift in front of me, ooh, money, great, love it. Um, the paradigm has changed. Um, it can be a struggle to fill an overtime shift today. People have plans with their families, whatever. Um, you know, uh, they value their time off for hobbies, whatever. Uh, you know, I don't, I can't necessarily give you everybody's explanation. Um, it would be, you know, something of a challenge. We do have a policy in place today um, that allows for us to mandate somebody being held over if we can't fill a shift. We frankly haven't had to use it, but in the interest of um, transparency and so forth, that was one of the earlier things I proposed when I became chief, was to at least let's put together a process that not everybody's 100% maybe in, uh, happy with, but if there's a problem where somebody comes down with an illness at six o'clock in the morning and calls and says, I can't make it in today, we have a mechanism for making sure we don't run short. Um, we did that. Frankly, it hasn't happened. That day may come. Um, the deputy and I are both in a position where if we had to come in and cover the engine for a few hours until we got somebody to come in and take the shift, we obviously would do that. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. It would be a little bit of a challenge for roughly a year to make sure that gets done. Now, having said that, the, the, the staff is supportive of the move to three people, and I think they would be as cooperative as possible in doing that if it, if it were to happen. Um, but part of, the, um, part of the way we need to move forward is if that, again, if that 
idea of backfilling next year um, is supported, um, <coughs> it would, you know, again, it would take a little bit of collaboration to, to make sure it can happen. Um, I don't anticipate every shift would be difficult to fill, but there will be some that will be a little bit of a challenge, especially perhaps something on a, on a short notice. Um, that I think is part of the um, attraction to the staff of moving forward with the original plan was to kind of do this gradually and get to the point where um, the odds of having to mandate somebody to stay um, are greatly reduced. I have a tough question, and I hate to ask questions like this no, it's because I'll end up looking like a jerk, but this is for both the town manager and for the chief. Um, we never want to have a firefighter in danger. We never want to have a um, situation where they can't perform their job as needed. For both of you, has there ever been a time since you've both been in charge where you put, you got yourself, with your back up against the wall and you said, I needed another man here for this incident? Um, we're hoping that never happens, and it should never happen, and we should plan for it to never happen. Just curious if, if it's ever happened. Hey, you're right, it's a hard question. Um, most calls, I think, we come back and say, gee, one more person would have let us do this, that, or the other thing, maybe quick, more quickly, more efficiently. Um, we place great emphasis on the safety of our personnel. Um, to be honest, there have been some times where we held, uh, perhaps not physically, but in a directive, have held some people back from attempting to do something we didn't feel was safe because we didn't feel we had adequate staff on scene at the time. Um, that hasn't resulted in any sort of tragedy. Um, and hopefully that continues. Um, part of the cost-benefit analysis we do many times a day, emergency calls, is what can we do, what skill, what act can we perform with, with some relative degree of safety to mitigate this incident? Um, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, short of training, um, ways for us to do that is to be able to divide the workload among more people. Um, but I can't, in all honesty, sit here and say that we, somebody was seriously injured or worse because of one person wasn't there. Um, would probably Somebody could probably trace some additional property damage to us not making an interior attack until we felt we had enough people on scene. And it may be a mutual aid department that takes 10, 12, 15 minutes to get here. Um, but my goal, and I think every chief who's come before me, and I know everybody on the floor feels the same way, we want everybody to go home at the end of their shift. Absolutely. In at least as decent a condition as they came in, and maybe a little sleep deprived, but we'll work with that. Um, so I'm not sure I can give you a 100% firm answer to your question, you but it's great. always a consideration. I don't that know how else to say. John? John, are we talking about this extra position full time, or are we talking about overtime? Overtime. Overtime. Well, what's the discussion here then? You're talking about having another man, aren't you? You're trying to sell another man, which the, which the committee just turned down. What's the discussion more on overtime? Do you need more money? Yes or no? More than what's in the budget. Again, the initial presentation that I made to the town manager after some discussion internally was to add the line that was $22,000 and change and overtime. to attempt, and the overtime okay. line to backfill to three on or about July 1st of next year. We met, discussed it, went back and forth a little bit, crunched some numbers, and 
decided to leave it alone and stick with the plan that we initiated last year of adding one person per year and it was removed from the budget and frankly that's where we are today the motion on the floor as I understand it was to add that back in that's what we're talking about. Over time. Correct. Yeah. So this year you spent uh, through October $56,000 or thereabouts so you want to have this $71,305 increase, to which, is, which has been recommended by the uh, town manager, I guess. And it's like no, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I have a question. When you backfill the selectman, no. uh, okay. Did the uh, selectman a position I think to so. fill a shift, Suggest that. Is yeah. appropriate. you only use the full-time staff to do that? Not necessarily. We have a few, two to three, two call members who meet the minimum level of certification and training where so we would you, offer them the opportunity to work. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, but as you can imagine, they work full time elsewhere okay. and it can be difficult on availability. Okay. But we do have the call members yeah. in a position to be able to occasionally fill a shift. Okay. Jim. Just. Uh, I'm getting lost here. Um, is there a motion on the floor? Yes, there yes. is. Which and is? I was hoping you'd explain the Kelly shift, where it's not someone that's working 24 hours straight. They may do the nine hours and then they're relaxing or whatever at the fire station. No, so no. It, it's it's simply when they're scheduled to come in at 7 a.m. on let's say a Thursday. Our, the way their Kelly days are set up is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Whoever's scheduled to work on that Wednesday, the third guy, that's his Kelly day, and he has it off. Okay. When it gets to that Thursday, whoever that scheduled per third person is, it's their Kelly day, and they're off. They're not working. Who is you, are we replacing that person with someone that's working a 24-hour shift? We're not replacing them at this time. Okay. Because we're running with the two instead of okay. the third Okay, but person. you... And the deputy are also at the fire station, correct? During the day, correct. And the lieutenants and stuff, they, they're part of the... the they're part of that the shift schedule. Program. Their Kelly day just happens to be Friday. Okay. So, uh, I have an idea that I'd like to throw out. Go right ahead, Jim. We have all sat here and said that we're willing to entertain the, the three-year concept of bringing a firefighter on year one, year two, year three. We're, we've brought year one on. We're proposing to bring year two on. Why doesn't this committee consider bringing on the third firefighter in December so that it's a short window this year and they'll be ready to go fully staffed under next year's window? Um, it kind of solves all the problems at once. It does have an impact on next year's budget um, because we're paying for a full-time firefighter for a whole year as opposed to a half a year, but I think it is a compromise that might meet everybody's needs. Jim? Well, Mike, Go I was going to question, why is July 1st, I mean, is July 1st a significant date to... Uh, oh, that's six months of the year. That right, gives so us time. I mean, if, you, if you were, would you be prepared to bring somebody on immediately after town meeting if the budget were approved? Well, it depends on your definition of immediately. The process we use is probably at a minimum of about a six-week process between advertising, oral boards, mm -hmm. background checks, and so forth. And I really wouldn't want to spend staff time and money to do that without the position being approved, um, which is part of the reason why we've kind of proposed, number one, the math is easy for a half a year, July 1st to the end of the year. Number two, we know what our budget status is in March. We can start the process, do the advertising, adjust the job descriptions, whatever it is we need to do, get that process going, and have somebody in place approximately July 1st. Okay, we got a motion uh, to increase line 140 overtime. John, I got one, one more question. Yeah. Jim, does your suggestion suggest 
that we not to approve this motion. In other words, we roll back that $22,000 in overtime. Is that what you're saying? That's what I would do. So, so just let me clarify this. You, you put forward the idea that we reject this motion to increase the overtime and, and approve a motion to hire a new firefighter in December and then another one in July. July of 20, this year, this year. 2022? 2023, and then December of 2023. Sorry, that was... Again, I'm going to, I'm not going to support that that motion is brought forward because we're hiring two people in the same year. I'd rather put the overtime in and be honest with the people, the voters that elected us, and who we talked to last year, that we stay on the plan and try to save a little money for the taxpayers. So uh, can we can we move the motion with a roll call vote? Please? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry, Bob. Before we go to press with this motion, my question is: Will the overtime proposed budget currently sitting with town manager and the board of selectmen at seventy-one three hundred five not change if we change. stay with the? One this year, one next year. One if you go with this area. motion, you're going to. This motion solely is to increase the overtime from seventy-one three hundred five okay. to ninety-four thousand zero zero six. That's all we're voting on. Is the it? motion on the floor, right? right. Okay. Nothing, no other motions brought forward at this time. Yeah, okay, everyone all set. Yeah. Uh, Leanne, Bob, would like a roll call. Mm -hmm. Bob Tucker. Yes. John Bart. Yes. Uh, John McDonald. No. Tom Bell. No. Sorry. Bob Mulholland. Yes. And T Brian Black. No. Steve Johnson. No. And Bob Lowman. No. And Matt Flash. Yes. Okay. So this time it is, it fails with um, four, five, zero. Okay, motion fails. Anything else concerning the fire department? Yes. I still have my question. Okay. I'm looking at the budget. First of all, the proposed budget, as I see, the department heads request and it looks has got ninety four thousand dollars worth of overtime in it. Is that also taken into consideration your request to add one, one and one, or two, one and one? The, the number that is under consideration, as I understand it, after review by the town manager and the board of selectmen, presumes the hiring of one person July 1st, okay. and that's it. That's, that number works for that. Okay, so it's the one, one, and one program that we Correct. established. Correct, year. correct. Okay. And if that's the case, I guess I have to ask you the question, can you live with the town manager and the board of selectmen's budget, given the fact that we've, we're talking about the one, one, and one plan. That's what we came here in December, uh, November 15th <laughs> yeah, I, I asking for, and that. if we leave with that, we're happy. Thank you. <laughs> now, it's, you know, again, we've discussed all the reasons and so forth, but there was a plan in place that seemed to have support. Okay. We kind of kicked the tires a little bit on maybe trying to speed it up. We decided, no, let's let it go, and that's where we felt we were. I'm sorry, I, I wasn't No, uh, fair 15, enough. No, I wasn't here on the 15th, so I didn't really get into the yep. detail, and I'm just I'm being educated at everybody's expense. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Hey, John. Sir. Yes, sir. Just one other thing uh, in reference to what Brian uh, had said. I see a little bit of an apples and oranges comparison uh, between the fire department and the police department. The fire department hiring is controlled by the town manager and the board of selectmen. The police department True. hiring is controlled by the police commission. And the only thing we can do, we, think we can't vote for it or against it, the only, the only thing we can do is reduce their bottom line in their budget. So I don't see that happening. So the way I see it, next year we're going to have, we're going to hire a new fireman, not next year, 2024, we're going to hire a new fireman and a new police officer. It's probably going to go that way. Well, that's not the way I see it. I'll disagree with you on that. Okay. If I am now the breach, I'm not sure about the policeman. And I looked again at the police department, same thing, per capita. Wolfboro is right in line for the number of 
officers that we have and the number of cars, and now with our public safety building being down around 10, 12 million, the cost also of towns in our general geographic area. Um, the only town that skews the whole thing is Guilford because they have to supply several officers every night a week at the New Hampshire um, Pavilion they have for 20, concerts. They have 21 spots, three are vacant. They have 18 sworn officers right now, yeah. but they have 21 spots. Yeah, and it's because of the New Hampshire Bank Pavilion. But I, I think what I'm saying is true. I believe hiring, firing, is controlled by the police commission Correct. under, Correct. under the right. Correct. Okay, yes. so yep. we have, if they decide to hire somebody, this committee has nothing to say. As far as the hiring, right. you're correct. But right. as far as the funding, but it's not in the budget. Right. There no. is something in there. It's, it's, yeah, okay, we'll talk about the bottom line. Of the <laughs> Very good. Let's move on. Thank you, Chief, for coming um, in. Appreciate it. I, I do believe he had one more follow up item. Um, okay. In yeah, his yeah, capital, capital outlay, outlay, he had um, given a list. It was in part of one of the handouts. Um, it's on page two. It's for technical rescue equipment. He gave a list of what he needed and pretty pictures to go along with that. I believe there was a motion that asked for more information on that proposal, so we right. send it along. Yeah, we just never got the backup material. Right. On exactly. Fair enough. I just so I, I think I have some ownership in that. The chief had originally had this in, a, in as a budget line item, and I asked him to break it out, put it in as a capital outlay item. So when he did that, I did not attach the backup. <clears throat> That's why we found it in our packets, but it didn't make it to you guys. So. John, do we have any kind of a motion to approve the capital that way now that we have the information that we were looking We'll go back to it. I'm sorry? We'll do it on our final review. We'll approve all the capital outlays. Okay. Okay, any other questions for the chief? No. Okay, let's move on. What do you have next, Casey? Um, planning and zoning, starting with the zoning board. Okay. <laughs> so planning and zoning has its own section about the middle of the book, and we're starting on page one, the zoning board. Okay, everyone knows Travis, a uh, planning official. Okay, a uh, 100 series. budget to 2023, the cost to date is uh, $1,500, which is $1,500 less, no, $1,000 less than what is in the budget. Is there anticipation that you're going to need all of the $2,500 for this year's budget? The reason that request was made, as you recall, was, was made this year the same way as it was last year. The board is looking at rewriting its rules or procedures that would require uh, publishing the notice of decision in the paper. Okay. So this isn't necessarily an expense to the taxpayer because the applicants would be covering those fees, but I do need the appropriate expense line to write that cost out of when the bills come from the paper. In other words, you have revenue for this line, is that correct? Yes. How much is revenue have you received this year? Not much. Right now the application only calls for $150. For revenue for the whole year? No, per application. So basically if you, if you look at what's been spent, there's been approximately 10 cases that came forward this year. We never know how many cases are going to come in. Right now the application form requires them to pay a $150 
uh, fee for newspaper publication. Okay. The average fee that the paper charges is in excess of $200 because everyone in Wolfboro likes the Granite State, which has a very high advertising cost. Question, what's the five-year average on this line? Yes. Even there. One second, John. Oh. Six, two. Twenty-four, twenty-seven. Two thousand four hundred twenty-seven dollars. Excuse me. Make a motion that we reduce this line to three thousand dollars. Second. Discussion. <clears throat> Jim, once there a law passed that allows you to post that, try to offset these costs to post those on the town website? Not, not for zoning board, for site plan, yes. For planning board, you can do that, but the town voted that down as well. When did they do that? June. And that was not to allow the you folks to put something on the website rather than put it in the paper? Correct. Planning board had a public forum on that, and the general outcry from the citizenry was keep it in the paper. Okay, so you guys decided to do that. The planning board made that decision. Correct, because it's only the statute only covers site plan review. It doesn't cover zoning board applications. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, the motion is to reduce line 562 to $3,000. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Motion carries. Okay, 600 series. John, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Um, Tavis, can you tell me how many uh, permits have been uh, pulled so far this year? Permits? For anything, for re for, uh, for uh, new buildings or, or uh, re-improvements? Uh, probably in the neighborhood of 1,100. Okay, thank you. Okay, 800 series. And that's it on the uh, zoning board. Page four, planning board. One hundred series. Two hundred series. Three hundred series. Line three eighty, please. Okay. Excellent. Outside services. Can you expand on why you're going three hundred thirty five hundred bucks over last year? Yes, we're doing the work on the impact fees. Excuse me, sir. It was the same as the proposal last year that the budget committee didn't approve, but the town uh, had an approved contract and moved forward with $8,000 worth of work for phase one. Phase two of that work is proposed for phase two for rewriting the impact fee ordinance. So the increase of $3,500 is for the writing of the impact fee ordinance? Is that Correct. What hearing? Consulting work for the rewrite of the ordinance. Yeah. <coughs> favor and explain the impact fee ordinance to me what is it in short anytime somebody builds a new let's just start with a, a three-bedroom single-family home right. the impact fee ordinance requires them to pay four thousand don't quote me four thousand one hundred eighty five dollars and ninety two cents in an impact fee that impact fee is monies that the town collects on a separate escrow account that then reimburses the school district for the improvements made several years ago school district. so Renovations to existing homes don't pay it. Demolishing an existing home, building a new home, they don't pay it. It's only when new homes are added to the system. Currently, how it's written. It's not my recommendation on how it's written, but that's yet to evolve. Hmm. Okay, so last year you got $4,000 for that. And then somewhere you found the extra money in your budget in order to do it, do what you needed to do last year then, is that correct? Correct, for phase one, correct. The Board of Selectmen signed a line item transfer to take the other 4,000 out of legal and give it to, um, with the town manager's approval, and give it for this project. Okay, thank you. <coughs> John, I had a question. Go ahead, John. <clears throat> What's have been the revenues of the, uh, for this line of uh, out, 
outside services. This is going to be paid by the impact fees? No. No. Okay. What are you receiving impact fees revenues now? Yes. How much did you get uh, so far this year? I don't have that figure right now. We don't have me. The study, so you want to have a study to figure out what to do with this impact fees, is that correct? The impact fee ordinance hasn't been touched since it was originally, Wait, the impact fee ordinance hasn't been touched since it was originally adopted. And when there, was it cut? Uh, 2013. 20 what? 13, I believe. It was the first time it was adopted. Oh, okay, no. but it's still active, is that correct? It's, it's still active, it's arguably dysfunctional, but and it's you're active. you're receiving revenues from that? The school is, yes. No. Thank you. Um, I paid an impact fee when I built my house 15 or 16 years ago, so the impact fee has been around for a nine, nine. Yeah. Yeah. at least then, because I paid it. I didn't want to. Okay, 500 series, 600 series. 800 series, and that's it on planning board. Page seven, the planning department. <coughs> what's your what's you see? <coughs> okay, 100 series. Two hundred series. <coughs> Three hundred series. <coughs> Five hundred series. <coughs> Six hundred. Eight hundred. Do you want to have a question on eight twenty? Steve, what did it? What's the five-year average on that line? You only spent one hundred eighty dollars this year. Well, for the past three years, no one's gone to a conference in person. Thank you. So you see that changing then? We're, we're getting out? Yeah, this, this particular price includes um, a trip to the National Planning Conference. I believe it's in Philadelphia at <coughs> this time. Um, that's something that my predecessors did on an annual or semi-annual basis. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go back a couple more years, you'll find the average be much different. <coughs> the average is seven hundred and ten dollars, and to Tavis's point, it was about nineteen hundred in two thousand and eighteen, and about fifteen hundred in two thousand nineteen. As long as when you go and you come back with some good information and you're learning something, it's all worth it. Exactly. And if, if I may, um, yeah. I'm just getting back to John Burke's question. There's been $54,000 in impact fees here today. Beg your pardon? $54,000 in impact fees. Thank you. You're welcome. Casey, how about five-year average on 810 travel and meetings? 1057 $150? No, $1,057. Oh, okay. But Thank you know you. what? I just read the wrong line. Professional development was seven ten with nine ninety eight in 18 and 1162 in 19. For travel and meetings, average is 1057, about 1918 and 1500 in 2019. Sorry, cross my mind. Thank you. Okay, that's it on planning. Now where would you like us to go? 11 Brewster, page 11, Brewster Building. Okay. 
Uh, 100 Chevy. <coughs> Two hundred. Three hundred. Four hundred. Question. I'm line four thirty five. Mm -hmm. Building maintenance. Fairly significant increase over last year, and I'm looking at one line item down on the bottom, and I hate this word: miscellaneous repairs, incidents, and costs for 25 grand. Let's call it what it is. What's going to break next? I think I think the board of selectmen wanted there are some bricks that need to be replaced, and if anybody goes into the back entrance way, we've thrown so much salt that it needs a lot of painting back there, and I thought that was going to be listed. Well, it, that I guess is my problem. I mean, twenty-five thousand dollars is is just actually three times as large as any other line item in that whole category of building maintenance, and it's under a category of miscellaneous. I'd like some definition before I even remotely think about twenty-five thousand dollars of miscellaneous costs. I need some definition. I don't know about anybody else, but I do. Okay. So you'd like that on the revisit list? I would, absolutely. I want to. I want to know what's in that twenty-five grand. Perfect. Agree. Okay. I have another question on that. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, we expended fifty-one thousand uh, this year. Can you just roughly tell me uh, why we had to spend that much? Something broke. Or uh, we had two different heating valves. Uh, one seized, one froze. They each had to be repaired. We had to replace two pumps on the furnace system. Uh, we had to relocate the condenser for the server room. Uh, we needed to, because of the condenser relocate, we had some fencing, electrical, mechanical, um, trying to think. We had to replumb the downstairs, the, uh, one of the areas of the basement from flooding. So, it adds up quickly because there's it, one of the reasons those cost items is, or that line item is so high is because there's no town staff to do much of this work. So every time something minor happens, we have to go pay basically market rate for someone to come in and do it. So one of the reasons, you know, I'm not trying to get out of re revisit. I'm happy to come back, but one of the things, one of the reasons that twenty five thousand is there is statistically we have not been able to secure someone to do painting. So one of the items when I'm doing, you know, how big is the budget? I have one line item that Linda was talking about. Painting for entry, hallway, first floor bathrooms, great hall, lower molding and heaters. That's just the painting, but we can't any, get anyone to sign on to do that work. So I estimated $6,000 for that work, but unable to get a contract for that, we have to pad that miscellaneous line. Because if it ends up being $8,000 for painting, that's something we haven't accommodated. The same time the selectman said well why don't we get some paint here here and here why can't we fix the broken molding on the stage why can't, you know when the lights go out in great hall there's only one person that can do it um, and it's not as simple as going to bradley's and getting light bulbs um, so i say it somewhat sarcastically but it's actually the reality of that building what's going to break next i understand that yeah i understand that well it's, so twenty five thousand dollars is a dart throw Absolutely. I want to know how many dart throws it took to make up $25,000. Yes. For, for if example. You, if you've got something, you obviously have a clue as to what's likely to happen and what you're likely to hear from the Board of Selectmen yeah. and whoever, town employees, this is wrong, that's wrong, whatever. I just like some definition of what's making up that $25,000 and what makes up the dart that you took in your hand through at the board. Some of it is the That's all I want. Isn't some of it the basement issues too, the flooding and the work that they've been... Rather than talk about it right now, yep. let's get some definition just, please. Sure. Thank you. Okay. 700, 800. That's nothing there. That's it. Reduce the building. Page 16, code enforcement. One 
200 series. I do have a question in, in the 100 series. Do we currently, do we lose a code enforcement officer at some point, or do we have one now? I, we have a new one that was brought on at a lower salary than the one that left. Okay, great. So we do have one on board. Correct. Thanks. 200. Three hundred, four hundred, uh, five hundred series, six hundred, and eight hundred. Okay, that's it in code enforcement. That uh, concludes Tavis's section. Thank you, Travis. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jim, you on board for delivery, I take it? I will. Do my best to answer the questions you have relative to the Libby. <laughs> so the Libby is in the Parks and Rec section on page one. This budget was cre uh, created by the Libby director before she left, um, and she did a pretty good job keeping it kind of almost level funded. You did that, Libby. Libby. Uh, it's in the Mark Sivak. I don't know what that's <coughs> Parks and Rec. It's toward the back. Parks and Rec, page one. Page one. Okay, uh, 100 series. <laughs> 200 series. Uh, quick question. Yeah. Do we have a, since the director left, do we, are we on board with a new one or? She, she's only seasonal, so oh, she, okay. she'll be back. <coughs> Thank you. So it isn't a leave, it's just a leave. And she's really good. She's phenomenal. Okay. I don't, I don't know that. Okay, 200, 300. Four hundred. Yeah, I'm sorry when I said leave. leave. That was misleading. <laughs> you have a question, John? No. No. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Four hundred. Five hundred. Six hundred. <coughs> and eight hundred. That looks like that's it on the Libby. I believe that concludes the budget deliberations for the evening. Other than the minutes, I don't want to. Yeah. Was that? I didn't want everyone to think they could get it. Yeah, we're almost at it. We're almost at it. We're going to get it. November 15th. There's no November 30th. Oh, there is. Okay, we just got to approve the minutes and we're going to take some public input. So, do you have something you want to say? Anyone? Public input? Okay. Uh, first is the minutes of November 15, 2022. Do you have a motion concerning those? Any changes? No changes. Okay, is that a motion to accept the minutes as written? Yes, sir. And a second? Second. Okay, motion is to accept the minutes as written for November 15th, 2022. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> minutes of November 30th. Any changes? Um, I sent an email to um, Leanne this uh, today 
Uh, she just missed some of the things in the revisit items. Um, economic development should be in there. CASA should be in there. Uh, Tri-County starting point, and there was one more. Um, Northern Human yeah. Services. <clears throat> but I, I outlined that in an email. Other than that, everything. It is in the minutes, but it's not in the revisit list. Okay, so it's it's in the minutes. There, it's in the body of the minutes, but when, then I do a recap of the revisit. Okay. And then I left out like three. Okay. Four. Uh, can I get a motion to accept the minutes with the following corrections as noted by KC? Uh, so, no, moved. so moved. Okay, in a second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of number 30th, <coughs> please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now to December 1st minutes of 2022. Any changes? Yes, I have two small changes. Um, in the in the paragraph under public works last sentence the word success should be succession succession okay not to be confused with succession anyone else have anything i have one more on that one the motion to adjourn um the date is 2021 it should be 2022. Sure, I'm reading them, Leanne. <laughs> Thank God. Yes, she reviewed them, so I do. Okay. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes with the yeah, that. changes recommended by KC? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of December 1st, 2022, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Okay, does anyone have anything else? Yes. Under five, under yes, sir. Uh, I, I guess this is for the Do we have any input as far as the, the reschedules? Um, the two, I think there's two agencies that haven't, yeah, um, haven't I, looked at. So I emailed them over the weekend, and I have been out of town for two days and okay. have not checked my email. Okay. That's why I didn't know about the changes that Kathy had. So. Um, I just need to, okay. as soon as I, I'm going to replug them in and I'll have a new um, schedule. Okay. I'll have a revised schedule on Wednesday. No. When are we meeting? Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. This week? No. Yeah. No? The 7th. No? We don't We're done until the 14th. 14th. I have a meeting on the 8th, yeah. We, you moved the 8th to the 14th. Oh, oh that's right. We have a Christmas, Christmas, Christmas party. party. Thank you. Thank okay. you for the reminder. I know. I was going to Party? So we're still, we're still next meeting at the 14th. Yes, right. sorry, yeah. I'm thinking it. However, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> uh -oh. yeah. I don't know. I have an idea. It's on the 14th. Up when? Up when, maybe. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Pinio. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I know that this got changed, um, and it was already in the makings when it occurred. Um, the Pop Whalen is having an open house on the 14th. Um, we're supposed to go over general government that night. Um, I'm kind of booked to be in both spots <laughs> now. So I would really like to see members of this group, if possible, be able to go to that meeting as well. Um, so I don't know if we've got any flexibility in the schedule um, to look at a potentially another date. To put without throwing things at me. What time is the open house? 6.30 to 8? 8.30. 6.30 to 8.30? You all need to go see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can we say the date's all over again? <laughs> uh, the 14th next Wednesday. <laughs> is uh, Pop Whalen. Pop Whalen open house and a budget committee meeting. Wayne, could you see if you can figure something out where we can postpone the 14th so people can attend the yeah. premiere? The premiere. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Uh, can we do that Monday? Uh, oh, we'd have to, Leanne's got to see oh, uh, what's town, going on. Town issues. Yeah, what's going on for the library and things. Oh, sorry. I mean, we do have two open dates. We could just <coughs> push, push everything, everything down. down. Or push general government to the end. I mean, 
no, no, because we got the revisit. We've got the final budget review. I would just push everything down, okay. and then only have one open date. I think that's probably so. Do the okay. final budget review after the holiday. Um, so, our next meeting would be the fifteenth, as opposed to the fourteenth, and then final budget review. Where is it? Yep, he's right. You'd move it from the 29th to the 5th. Yep, to January 5th. Is anyone going to be gone for the Christmas holiday over that week or anything? Okay. He might not be sober. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. So <laughs> if anybody's that, huh? back after the first wow. of the year, that's all we want to know. Yeah. Will you be ready to spend money like a drunken sailor? <laughs> <laughs> so nobody has any problems if we change. If we move everything down, so the next meeting will be on the 15th, yeah. and that'll be general government if that's, that's good to go on that day? Yeah. Okay. So everything just dropped down. So the final budget review will actually be on January 5th. Well, actually, wait a minute. Um, yeah, we'll drop everything down, but can I ask, I, could we just leave the existing, like, water and sewer on the 15th and the electric on the 19th, and then we'll plug in general government on the 20th. That's yeah, fine. I just, because yeah. then we have to notify twice people. as many That's departments. Fine. Okay, no so issue. you're going to move the general government to the 20th. 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 Okay. Got it. So our next meeting will be the 15th, and it'll be the water fund and sewer fund. Perfect. Thank you so much. I think that would be fantastic. Whatever works for you, Jim. There is. <laughs> Yes. Could whatever, a form, whatever the town manager wants. <laughs> Hold on, I've got a question here. Yeah, yeah, Tom. Could a, a formal invitation go to this yeah, committee I'll send you uh, for the pop whaling yeah, thing? I'll send you one electronic. Yeah. Uh, general government. We're going to do schedule one. The 27th yeah. appointment. Yeah, the annual put down. I'm going to the agencies. The 27th. Our next meeting will be the 15th. It's going to drop down to the final budget for you, Bob. It's going to be. The fifth, yeah, but so on the 29th is nothing. The 20, the 29th. Okay. Can you? No, there will be something if no. necessary. Oh, yeah. No, no, yeah. That's the on the 20th. We're going to move down to. Uh, so that's the 29th is the open date. Right now. It's 20. The no, the open date right now is the January 5th, okay. and that's going to become the new final budget review meeting, the meeting that we do the final budget. So review. what do you want to plug in? So we can just give these guys a, a date for general government. General government is December 20th. 20th. Yeah, 20th, okay. And then whatever's on the 20th is bumping down to the 27th. Okay. And the 27th is bumping down to the 29th. And then the 29th, which is final budget review, oh, okay. will bump the down fifth. to All the 5th. Right. And then we still have one more open date. Okay. Yeah, you've got two open dates. Right? Perfect. There we go, yeah. Yes. Anybody, anybody, have, anybody, have, anybody have anything no. else? No. no. Show up. Okay. See you next. We get a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second. Thanks. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you.